Now, we've all heard about fellowships of various subspecialities, and uh, just before I go in my conclusion remarks, I want to emphasize that in arthroplasty, which is my field of uh, speciality, there are certain Indian fellowships available, notably the one which is given by the South Indian Arthroplasty Association, which moves through Hyderabad at Sunshine Hospitals, Ganga Hospital, uh, with Dr. Sharan Patel at Sparsh in Bangalore, and with uh, Dr. Vijay Bose and Sudhir Narayan at Chennai. So that's a two-year fellowship, which is pretty good. Uh, Dr. Guru Reddy at Sunshine Hospital also has a hands-on arthroplasty fellowship, which uh, gives a good experience. The reason I'm saying all this is just like you heard in spine and in hand, etc. If you have some basic arthroplasty experience ahead of going for an overseas fellowship, you'll be able to get the best out of it. And they will be able to give you more work than if you go straight away from the end of your training, wherein you've done maybe, maybe not done any or seen a few joints. So that's something to be kept in mind. So fellowships are the need of the hour, especially when we have situations where the number of residents are increasing and the amount of hands-on work is decreasing. When I joined MS Orthopedics in KEM in 1990, we were six first posters in, on the, in the per year intake. Now that six has become 24. The number of OTs in KEM has remained the same and the anesthetist still does not want to give you a case after 2 o'clock. So the amount of work going to each person is obviously going to go down. So we need to expand our horizons and need to go abroad for training as well as what is available inland. Advantages of a fellowship I'm not going to go into. Many different ways to skin a cat is what you learn, different perspectives. A more patient-centric approach compared to what we have in our teaching hospitals here where uh, we tend to be more surgeon specific, we, the patient tends to be secondary. Yes, you will start off as being the jack of all, but to become a master of some, you have to take a specialized fellowship. Research and publications has been stretched by most of the earlier speakers, publish or perish is the mantra. So start early in your postgraduate training, it could be an MS training, could be a DNB or a DAuth, but if you're able to get some good publications under your belt, it helps you when you're applying for a fellowship abroad. Now, we did not sp specifically speak about UK and US, that's what the remit was for this session, but something that I need to highlight is that uh, if you are keen on going and training in the UK, and this goes across all specialities, is that you have two basic routes to get your GMC registration. The first and the most used one is if you pass your MRCS, which is now administered in India completely and can be taken after your two or three years of orthopedic training. It could be, as I said, D or DNB, MS, doesn't matter, as long as you have surgical requisition, uh, surgical requirements for the MRCS satisfied. Once you have the MRCS, you are able to then apply for middle grade registrar level jobs in the UK, and they are quite easy to get now because uh, Brexit has come in. So Brexit actually works in favor of our uh, stu uh, students because the UK is no longer bound to first take European doctors and then only then take non-Europeans. So we have now got a get better opportunity to go to the UK. So please make the most of it. The second route is the MCH route. I'm sure most of you are aware if those who are not, then that MCH route is now through the University of Writing Pin uh, wherein you don't even have to give your MRCS, but you get your GMC registration for two years uh, through a MCH program. It is, of course, paid. It is to the tune of 35,000 pounds over, the, over two years, but you are assured of a paying job in those two years. So that doesn't, uh, that makes up for the fees that they're giving. First year is usually at a junior level, i.e. SHO level. Second year is at the registrar level and you are allowed to choose which speciality you are interested in. So I have got a few of my residents who are, one of them is doing arthroscopy, one of them is doing spine, so it depends on what you put your put forward when you are interviewing for that. 
and the royal colleges will try and trick you, make you do exams like the international FRCs, etc. Please be careful, it, they are supposed to be money making machines at the end of the day. There are dedicated IOA fellowships also in England as I mentioned, Dr. Kamal Deep at Glasgow Royal has an arthroplasty fellowship which is available and gets great hands on work. There are fellowships there uh, which are not recognized for training which the locals don't uh, take up so we also get a better chance though the amount of training and work is same. Dr. Mohanty here has had a chance to do a fellowship at Writington. I'm sure he'll be uh, able to guide anybody who wants to move uh, in that direction. The US basically if you want a fellowship you have to go down the US MLE route because otherwise you will end up getting observer posts without really getting a chance to do anything hands on. The question I'm asked so many times is do we do a fellowship and can you get a chance to settle down in the US as a consultant? Well it varies from state to state. Some require a residency program, some may accept you after doing three or more fellowships. So all American fellowships have to be, are useful only and only if you manage to clear the US MLE. So in conclusion, don't be in a hurry to start your practice immediately after your qualification. If you are not going to be able to increase your knowledge base, improve your horizons and become a master of whatever subspeciality you have chosen. Uh, the world is your oyster. Go out and explore what it has to offer in your favorite subspeciality. Knowledge is power and may the force be with you.